Today we're going to discuss pedigree charts. We're going to talk about what they are, what the symbols on them mean, and then how to read them. Exactly what does it mean following through the family tree of um, your ancestry and what those traits actually show as you go through. A lot of times scientists will use a pedigree chart to show different inheritance of diseases as we go through, um, through history. So pedigree charts are just a chart that shows um, the inheritance of traits throughout a family tree. So from generation to, uh, to generation. When we've talked about Punnett squares, that just gives us the actual probability of having children with a specific trait. The pedigree chart actually shows the trait and how it flows through um, the history of the family. So we have a couple of symbols that we're going to use on a pedigree chart. A male and a female do not actually have the trait being followed if the square or the circle is not colored in. So if we have a square, we're talking male. If we have a circle, we're talking female. If it's not colored in, they don't show the trait that we're talking about. Okay. However, if we have a colored in square, we're talking about a male that has that trait, or if we have a colored in circle, we're talking about a female that has that trait. Okay. And what we'll do, what we do is we actually represent them through symbols on a family tree. So for instance, if we're talking here, we might have, oh, let's just say this is what we have. Okay. We have a male and a female. The male carries or shows the trait. The female shows the trait. Okay. And they're married because there's a straight line connecting the two between the two. Okay. If there's a line coming down off of that marriage line, then it means that they had offspring, okay? that they had babies. The babies are shown, the siblings are shown by a line that goes across through that straight line down, a line that goes across, okay? and then they come down off of lines. So their siblings, if they're connected by a line on top of them, they're married if they're connected by a line between them. Okay? So we have squares for males, circles for females, colored in if they show the trait, and then you can show the different generations and marriages and things like that by the lines connecting these. So let's take a look at this um, chart here. This chart is going to show us that fast twitch muscles are dominant over slow twitch muscles. Okay, Fast twitch are dominant over slow twitch. Now, if you have slow twitch muscles, that's recessive, so those are the ones that are colored in up here. The recessive trait is what's colored in. We're going to number each of our boxes or circles. Okay, Each individual will have a specific number, so then we can refer to a specific individual. Individual number 6 would be this one right here. Individual number 12 would be this, this one right here. Okay. So this shows our family tree with the specific trait of fast twitch versus slow twitch muscles. So every single square or circle that's colored in on here, so number 1, 10, 12, and 14, have slow twitch muscles which are recessive. The rest have fast twitch muscles which are the dominant trait. So taking a look at this, a couple of questions that we can answer based on following through the Punnett square, or the, sorry, the pedigree chart. What is the genotype of 3 and 4? So if we look at 3 and 4, 3 and 4 both have fast twitch muscles. So they could be genotype, if we're going to use colors, um, or if we're going to use the letters, let's use letter F for fast twitch, uppercase F for fast twitch, lowercase f for slow twitch muscles. So, this is a dominant recessive inheritance pattern. So this could be big F, big F, or big F, little f. And this one could be big F, big F, or big F, little f. And we're not sure yet. So we have to do a little bit of following through the pedigree chart. 
So to figure this out, we're going to look at the next, look at their kids. Okay, so three and four are married. They have kids. This line coming down shows they have kids. And the line going across connects their three kids. So nine, ten, and eleven are the children of three and four. Now, by looking at what the children are, if any of them have slow twitch muscles, that means they have the trait little f, little f. If they have the genotype little f, little f, then they had to get a little f from mom and a little f from dad, so they had to get the two slow twitch muscle traits, one from each parent. Number 10 does, which means that 3 and 4 both have to have the genotype big F, little f, to show fast twitch muscles, to have the phenotype of fast twitch muscles, but to be able to pass on so that the baby could have slow twitch, mus slow twitch muscles. Okay. The next question. So the genotypes of 3 and 4, number 3 is definitely going to be big F, little f, and number 4 is going to be big F, little f also. The next one reads, can either 8 or 9 be homozygous? So this again, we're looking at, are they going to be big F, big F, or big F, little f? We can't tell here, so we have to look at the offspring. Okay, their offspring, some of their offspring show little f, little f, which means, no, neither one of them can be homozygous. They both have to be heterozygous to be able to pass on the slow twitch alleles. Lastly, explain the relationship between numbers 12 and 2. So if we're looking at this, we have number 12 is right here, and number 2 is up here. Okay. First of all, number 2 is a female, and number 12 is a male. Looking at that, you also will notice that there's two generations between them. If we follow back through, this has the parents 8 and 9. 8 is the daughter of number 2. So number 12 would be the grandson, and number 2 would be the granddaughter. Uh, sorry, grandmother. So we would have grandmother slash grand Okay, and that would be the relationship. So we're going to take a look at a second pedigree chart real quick. This one includes sex-linked traits. So a sex-linked traits pedigree is going to be, remember, it's on the X chromosome, and it's, um, for this one in particular, hemophilia is recessive and on the X chromosome. So that means males are going to be more susceptible than females are. Okay, males are going to be more susceptible to this disease than females are. So looking at this, let's start going through. First of all, if it's a male, it has to have one X and one Y. So I'm going to start going through and putting genotypes underneath for what we can figure out. So this male has two options. It can be either X big H for no hemophilia or X little h for hemophilia, and the, and the second allele has to be a Y. So this one has hemophilia because it's colored in, it carries the trait. So it would be X little h y, and this parent is going to be have X big H, it's a female, and X, which we don't know about yet. Okay? So the second one we don't know about yet. Number three, again, female. We don't know what she has for traits. She's going to be X big H X question mark, because we don't know what the second one is, but she does not have hemophilia. This male has hemophilia, so he's going to be X, little h, y. This female has hemophilia, so she's going to be X, little h, X, little h. So going back to our sex length traits, remember, males are X, y, females are X, X. Males only have one chance to not have the trait. Females have the two chances. This is a male that is not hemophiliac. So X big H Y. X big H Y for this one, same thing. Female that does not. So X big H 
x question mark. Over here, male that has hemophilia, x little h y, female does not, x big h, x question mark, male that does not, x big h y, male that does, x little h y, and two females that do not, so they could be either x big h question mark, because they could be x big h, x big h, or x big h, x little h. So now we can start filling in some of those question marks. Because remember, for, dad, uh, for boys, mom has to pass on a trait on the X chromosome. Dad passes on the Y chromosome. So let's look at the sons of this combination here. Dad's going to pass on the Y, so mom has to pass on either the X big H or X little h if we have it. She had a son that has hemophilia. So she had to have passed on a little h, so she has to have that little h trait. Again, she has a daughter also that has hemophilia. For a daughter to have hemophilia, mom has to carry the allele, and dad has to be a hemophiliac also. So here, to be a daughter, Dad has to pass on the big H, or the little h. So dad passes on the little h to this daughter, and that's where we can get some here. Now, we still don't know those two, and we're not going to know what those two are. Okay? Because dad has to pass on the big H, mom could have passed on either big H or little h, little h and we don't know what they're going to pass on because they're both going to show no hemophilia. Down here, for the female, mom has to pass on an X and dad passes on an X. So dad has to pass on the little X to the daughter, a little H. So dad has to have a little H here to pass on. And this one, X little H Y, mom has to pass on a little H to the son. So there's that. So now when we start asking, what are the genotypes? What's the genotype of number three? The genotype of number three has to be heterozygous, X big H, X little h, because she had to have gotten a little h from dad. Oh, sorry. My apologies, that's not her dad. She married into this family. She has to have a little h to pass on to her son, okay? Her son gets a Y from the father and has to get a little h from her, okay, X little h from her. So she has to have that little h to pass on. When we ask, what is it over here that this one has for a genotype, this is where we can say for number seven, number seven, she got her X little h from dad. Okay, dad had to pass on an X little h to her, and because she doesn't have hemophilia, mom had to pass on the X big h to her. Okay, if we're asking about the relationship between the offspring and or the different people on here, so let's say number two and number twelve. Let's look at number two and number twelve again. Same um, numbers as the last Punnett square. Number two and number ten at uh, twelve. We're two generations apart. This is a female. This one's also a female. So they must be grandmother and granddaughter. So Punnett squares help show us the probability of passing on from parent to offspring, but it doesn't show us what they actually have. A pedigree chart will show us what it is that is shown, whether or not you have the trait, or you show the trait or not, and then you can follow that trait back up through different um, ancestries that you have, the different generations for where, whatever numbers that you have the, um, the phenotypes of for your offspring.